Step on board with us for this North Atlantic Ocean race, crossing 2,800 nautical miles of open water. Whilst Chris was on a 10-week expedition in the Southern Ocean, I jumped on board Escapado, a Beneteau 40.7, to skip for a team in the ARCS Racing Division. I had intended to have some time off in the UK, but it was really hard to say no to this opportunity, and I hope this film shows you why. Get ready to meet the team and enjoy sailing under symmetric spinnakers as we embark together on this trade wind voyage. Hey, I'm Charlie Warhurst, I'm 20 years old. Hi, I'm Iona Nelson Yates, um, I've just turned 19 on the trip down. Cool, uh, so hi, I'm Tom, I'm 18 and I'm from Edinburgh uh, and I'm a crew member on Escapado. Hi, my name is Catherine Miller. I'm on board here on Escapado with my boyfriend, Jake. So my name's Jake. Uh, I'm originally from North Norfolk on the coast and I'm here sailing with Kat, my partner. Hi, I'm Eddie. I'm 19 from Chichester, West Sussex. I'm Alistair. I'm 62 years old and I'm working in Inverness at the moment. I'm a part reti partly retired uh, uh, doctor, a hospital doctor. My name's Sophie O'Neill and I'm the skipper of Escapado for this transatlantic crossing. My job on board was to skipper the boat, not as a videographer. This was secondary, so there are many occasions where we lack footage of events, but I will explain these within the movie. Let's start at the beginning. Before we could depart, the mammoth task of provisioning and storing foods took place. So, Tom, why, why are you taking the labels off the tins? Uh, because you get lots of water going in there, and then it goes all kind of moving. And quite grim. Um, so it's good getting these off, and also I think um, you can get like cockroaches, clean eggs, places if you don't want them. And this is probably one of the places you don't want them. Yep, and then once you take the label off, how are you marking what tin is what? Uh, just for our permanent marker, right on the top. So Kat and Jake, uh, Jake's the engineer on board and second in command. Kat uh, is in charge of sales, but you guys have been out provisioning today. How many hours have you been pr provisioning? Uh, two to three. Yeah, it's probably... It's half two now. Yes, yeah, so I wish right, I'd counted my steps. There are 11, 11, 12, 1, 2, three and a half hours. Yeah, and is that all the provisioning? Nope. <laughs> All of our uh, fresh stuff, new rolls and kitchen paper. Stuff. So three quarters of the way there anyway. Ah, good. <laughs> yeah. We also carried out other checks, including engine and electrical. If we put any in the grab bag, that'd be a good one to do to check. Then we set off for the start. I must mention, we ran the engine to charge the batteries. It was not used for propulsion. We had super light and fluky winds running down the east coast of Las Palmas. Slipping into the night, this was our last sighting of land. We popped the spinnaker and the crew took to helming under the kite's guidance. Here's our Scotsman Tom on the helm. <laughs> A rule I adopted long ago and apply is no one speaks to the helmsman, and the helmsman doesn't speak out. Unless it's trimming related, you'll see the crew's intense focus as the film progresses. So I'm trying to keep it around at 245. Here's some safety related footage. We always carry out a thorough helm handover. This includes information about the wind direction and speed, waves, pressure on the helm, etc. The old helm doesn't let go until the new helm says, my helm. The old helm will sit nearby for five minutes whilst the new helm gets into the helming groove. At night, clipping on is a must. The crew clip on before stepping into the cockpit.
Here is a brief taking place between a watch change at night. But where we thought it might build more, it's going to stay pretty consistent. Who's your grinder at the moment? Uh, Alistair's the top grinder over here at the moment. Okay, Tom, sorry to distract you with the light, but can you describe what you're doing to uh, helm the, help your helming with the kite? Okay, uh, we've worked for about 370 at the minute. Um, well, it is really light wind, so if the leading edge starts to curl there, it's going to head off, it's going to power it up and catch it before it kind of collapses, ideally. Good. So you're helming to the kite rather than then a course? Yeah. Roughly Those that sail with me will know my favourite sail is the Symmetric Spinnaker. Not just for its performance, but also for its size and beauty. And like the other sails, it is always talking to you, come day or night. Gotta look out for big waves. I know the sail can make some sailors nervous, so I put an emphasis on taking away that fear. So from the start, with the right wind strength from the beam or aft, we flew this majestic sail during the day and through the night. So we had an asymmetric uh, spin of rip, um, which took place on day one, um, or day two, yeah, day two. Um, so we are to power it, see the length of damage goes down and also across the spinnaker. We ran out of repair tape, so we improvised using good old gaffer tape. We've got Charlie on the helm, dressed for the North Atlantic. Rightly so, though. I it's think, down quite a bit. I think so. Good, I, was, I thought you guys were going to say that the winds dropped. Well, let's now take a look at life below deck. As you will see, a lot takes place. And Tom, what are you doing here? A bit of washing up, it's got to be done. Is it part of the duties? Uh, yes. So what's the morning duties? Uh, morning duties are give the deck a scrub and the deck walk. In the saloon, the galley, the heads, um, um, and shake the filters. That's a good one. Five. 30 cents each. Daily, daily temperature checks taken by our onboard doctor. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, then, take <laughs> Watch leader is overseeing the water. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, once you've done the water, I wouldn't mind getting out of the way. I can do the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Next, find the water. Uh, one there, look, that'd be too big. Oh, okay. well done. Oh. Twice daily, we, uh, we top up the water bottles from our oh, really supply good. of uh, drinkable water. That's the first time. And it keeps <laughs> a, a record of how much everyone's drinking and making sure that we take don't exceed our allotment. Really daily allotment. Oh, that's good. Allowance. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Don't exceed our allotted daily allowance. <laughs> the entertaining part is making sure we're in a choppy sea. Why we top the bottle up? And it's vital we don't spill any, isn't it? Yeah. Because yeah. we we calculate water for how many days? Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Twenty-five days. 25 days. We, we we thought it might be thirty days, so there's a little extra. But... And where's um what figures have you got there? I've got the the daily amounts all written down for for all the crew. Is that one then? Oh, that's uh, Cats, is it? This is Jake. This is Jake. Jake. Oh. Oh, the precision. Oh, look at that. It is not always plain sailing at sea. Here we had a situation whereby we had to send someone up the mast to retrieve a halyard. Can you guess who we sent aloft? Our hardy Scotsman, Tom. We sent him up the forestay. This is very safe to do so. We put a loop around the forestay back onto the harness so that he didn't swing wildly out of control. Oh. Oh. Here, 
there is no risk of slamming into the spreaders or shrouds whilst in the swell. So we've just had our morning sunrise shift and we're having breakfast. Tom and Charlie, what have we had for breakfast so far? Uh-oh. <laughs> What's your nutritious breakfast? A Nutella quesadilla. And what's for seconds? Chocolate cereal. Chocolate cereal. Our watch is known for snacking. <laughs> and we're about to get ready for um, what's the next drill? Spinnaker hoist. Yeah, spinnaker hoist. So this is free spinnaker hoist energy. <laughs> and how far have we got to go to the Caribbean? Uh, it's about another 1500 miles, yeah? It will be okay, but we might get a little wet on the way. Life at sea sometimes adopts some good old fashioned entertainment. <laughs> okay, back to stop. <laughs> As we headed further southwest, temperature steadily increased. It meant we had to pay more attention to the conditions below decks. In such a warm environment, sickness could run rife through the crew. Domestically, down below, need to work a bit better and keeping it really clean and tidy. As the skipper, I tend to float between the two watches so I can coach all the crew, get involved in deck work myself and to enjoy everyone's company. OK, bear away. And of course, to ensure both watches maintain equal focus. The Caribbean weather. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Caribbean way to wash your hair, right? <laughs> Perfect. You're right between two squalls descending down upon you. Bring it on. As we got nearer to the Caribbean, at about 1,200 nautical miles, we started running a gauntlet of squalls. We kept the spinnaker up, but were always alert should we need to do a rapid drop. Here's my boy, puppy-eyed selfie with the on-watch. Woke me up for a potential squall. And there is, if you look behind us, there are some dark clouds behind Alistair. Observing the clouds around you is a must for any sailor. They can indicate a significant change in weather. At times we had small, unthreatening cumulus clouds, as well as these high cirrus clouds. But we also had these huge building cumulus nimbus clouds. With a dark wall hanging below at the base of the cloud, they looked quite menacing. In this scene, the wind picked up to a steady 26 knots. We wanted to push hard, but we were now on the edge. 
At this moment, the spinnaker sheet broke free and we went for a quick bareheaded drop. Later that night, all was calm. But something took Tom by surprise. I think I'm knocked out. Alistair, do you think that's his face or a fish? Whilst on the helm, he was hit in the face by a flying fish. I'm not sure if that's fish blood or if it's your blood. <laughs> right. Go on, let's have a look then. Oh, cheap. Oh, there we go. Can we keep it? Keep what? Yeah. The fish. <laughs> <laughs> keep you can have it for breakfast. <laughs> As mentioned, we were in the racing division in the Ark, always trying to make the boat go faster. This means many, many sail changes, from foresails to spinnakers and back again, depending on the wind's strength and direction. Whatever happened, the crew always spent time tidying up the cockpit. Alistair, can you explain what you're doing there with the uh, water bottles? I'm uh, making origami <laughs> and we're going to make a, 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 an offering to the wind gods <laughs> so that they, they speed us on our way. <laughs> and you're doing that by? Uh, by chopping up these water bottles uh, to, uh, so we can stack them all in one, push them all into, push them into one, one bottle and reduce the volume and uh, uh, increase the recycling. Um, sort of left stranded, abandoned in the corby. And then... This is the hat brigade. <laughs> 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 It'll be beautiful. Yeah. Over the top. Yeah. Cool. You're yeah. It wasn't always all work and no play. Here, we had a break from the hard work, <laughs> celebrating Kat's birthday, oh, with a very inventive cake made out of lollipops. We've got some birthday music on. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh the candles come out. Oh, oh look at your surprise birthday cake. Surprise. That's amazing. <laughs> Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Kat. Happy birthday to you! <laughs> birthday to <C. laughs> That's absolutely amazing, guys. <laughs> we quickly got to a point where the teams were so slick at hoisting and dropping the spinnakers, we decided to mix things up so they could experience different roles during a hoist. Stand by on the foredeck! Addison, you're going to ease the sail out, the spinnaker. Eddie, you're working with Iona. Alistair, yeah. you've got to be looking aloft. As soon as Eddie's made it, shout made. Okay. Eddie, as the marksman, do not look up. Yep. Your job's purely to sweat until we all holler at you. Right. Okay? Yeah. Right. Push it off. Uh, guys, ready. Bows ready. Mask ready. Ready. Pit ready. Ready. Um, and trimmer, you're going to uh, have loads of slack in it to start with. Loads of slack. Keep two turns on at least. I know it's light. And then once the um, kite is made, then you can trim on. Yep. Iona, as soon as the kite is up and you hear that made, jump on the jib halyard. It's ready to drop. Yep. Don't, don't wait for them to get into position. They'll sit there and have a cup of tea. We brought Tom and Iona back to the cockpit and put the original cockpit crew on the bow. Here I was giving instruction to the new teams in unfamiliar territory. Watch them go. Go ready! Alistair, look up! Made, 
Good. Is that locked off by owner? Yes. Yeah. yeah, ready on the chip. Trim on a bit. Tom. Trim, trim, got loads of flat. Yeah, don't give him any time, okay, Iona. Put pressure on the bow. Pressure on the bow. Down to two turns, Iona. Feed it like a pro, not like an RA come through. Big eases, Iona, like a pro. Iona, that's all there. Jump on the guy behind you. Good, work together. Yeah, let them play around with that, Hallie, if they have a nice time. Don't worry, they can faff around that when you get the kite back. Keep it on, Iona, we're going to drive on the guy. Good, so you and Tom are working together. Pull back. Bring that pull round. Good, nice. Back in the pit. Yeah, ease that chin, um, Todd. You see it's curving inwards. Back in the pit. Um, no, we'll get you to flake the jib. Stand by, four deck. Okay. Oh, yeah, hold it there, Iona. Set down or not too tight. Good, and Tom, trim that um, tight. Sorry, keep them off a bit. Okay, Alistair and Eddie, if you guys can flake the jib. And I own a take up on that jib halyard for them. Yeah. Tom, can you flick your your peak back like you did earlier? Like what? You flicked it back like a sailor. That's oh, it. That was an accident. <laughs> <That's> an <American>. <laughs> <laughs> oh really? <laughs> like an American sailor like there. Do you need a bike or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, like a pirate. No, that's good. Is that? Yeah. I mean, Eddie's hat, that has to be one of the cutest ones yeah, too. Yeah, that's quite cool. That's quite cool. <laughs> when an opportunity arose, instead of sitting idle, we practiced some other drills and skills, such as using the sextant. Mark! Okay. That's uh, by turning the dial underneath, and you want to swing the sextant so when it's first sun should just kiss the horizon. Yeah, like right behind the yellow. Brilliant. Try and ease the left one forward. So if it jerks, lower your right hand down to try and catch up with it. So your right hand should come down, rocking it to the horizon. All right, guys, so are we ready for a lesser box prop? Ready. Yeah. Bowman, you ready on the tack? Stand by. Pitman, you ready? Ready, Pitman, uh, stand by a sec. I'm going to get you to ease the tack line just a foot at the moment. Yep. Um, Grind, are you ready? Okay, Helmsman, you ready? Ready. I'm going to hold a steady course, Helmsman. Yes, yeah. ready on the Hallian. Okay, Iona, blow the tack. Yay, there she goes. Every stop picking up. Stand by on your Hallian. Here, introducing a different method for dropping the spinnaker known as the letterbox drop. However, in this case, the halyard had snagged, so we put down the camera to sort out the issue. We also tested out creating our own staysail using the storm jib to gain some extra speed. The crew were always enthusiastic to try things out. Going back to the 24 hour period, they can um, run through the daytime as well. They're not just nighttime occurring squalls. So if they're talking about 24 hours, we're talking about it going into tomorrow as well. If it doesn't reach us today, it may reach us tomorrow. We are in the zone, the schools are transiting and they're heading uh, north eastwards. So um, we are in their path. If you liked this film, please do like and subscribe to our channel. We would really appreciate it. And check out our other films, Sailing in the High Latitudes.